Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. Today I am going to show you the process as I am making the Sew Over It Erin skirt. So this is a pattern I've had for quite a long time and I've been hemming and hawing as to what to do with this black denim that I have. So hang on. So I have all of this black denim from Minerva and I think I have two and a half meters. I don't really wanna do a pair of jeans. I don't think I'd get a ton of use of them here in Spain, but I do think a jean skirt is always really useful. And I also might be able to squeak out something else as well, but I'm gonna start with the Aran skirt. So I have the pattern printed out and I'm starting to put it together on my floor. I'm gonna cut it today. We'll see if I start sewing today. But the funny thing is, is that these are gonna be my first buttonholes. <laughs> So you know I have my new machine, I'll show you. There she is, looking pretty. And I have tested a couple buttonholes. I've used the buttonhole foot, um, but I haven't actually made a buttonhole on a garment yet. So I'm gonna do that. Um, so I hope that you enjoy this. On my last video that was a, a maker vlog, um, some people said you know, it was nice to see the process and see that mistakes happen and things have to be changed and that's just all part of it. And that you know, you're know you not just seeing the perfect ending to the perfect make to the perfect process. So that is so true. Um, so often on the making journey, there are road bumps and you have to make a turn and you've got to figure something out. And, uh, and hopefully, well, who knows how this is going to go. I have no idea. I literally have not started yet. <laughs> um, but I hope that you enjoy the process. It's real. It's raw. It's sewing in the wild. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here I go. All right, let's talk sizing. So I have made a few sew over it patterns. I've made their patterns when I kind of was starting garment sewing a bit more. Haven't made one in a while. Um, I've always found though that the sizing is generous. Like I find that my measurements tend to put me at a certain number and then I generally have a lot of ease. But, so, so when I'm looking at this now, like, okay, I put this together. Um, I've cut it out roughly. When I looked at the size chart, well, my waist measurement puts me at a size 14 and my hip measurement puts me at a size 10. Now, if I grade from a 14 to a 10, I will literally have a smaller hip than the waist, so that can't be right. So I've cut the 14 because I did measure the pattern and measured me. I haven't been a 14 in a sew over it pattern ever, like ever, and I'm not any bigger than I used to be. And the other thing is that um, this is a fitted garment and I haven't made a fitted garment with sew over it before. So maybe that's the difference is a fitted garment has slightly different ease. I don't know, let's see. Okay, so I just took out a denim skirt that I already have and I measured that and I compared that to the finished garment measurements and I actually think a 12 is going to work. So I'm gonna cut this 14 down to a 12 and then I'm gonna cut the garment. <laughs> All right, I am back. It is a blustery, windy, rainy day here. So good time to stay inside and do a little bit of sewing. So I have cut the pattern. The only thing I haven't cut yet are the pockets and here's why. I find pockets huge. Like I just, I don't need this big of a pocket. I'm only carrying around a phone and you know, my car keys maybe, but usually they'll be in a purse. So I find sometimes these pockets are really gigantic and they add bulk in the front of a pant or skirt. Um, usually I found it on pants. Anyway, when I took out my jean skirt, this is the jean skirt that I made using the tutorial from the Stitch Sisters and I'll try and remember to link that below. So these used to be a pair of jeans. Um, when I turned them inside out, I noticed that for the pocket, they do the pocket in a lighter fabric and even, even the pocket, what would this be, the pocket bag or the pocket facing is only to there in denim. The rest of it is um, just in cotton. And look how small it is, it's just teeny. <laughs> so 
I think I'm gonna start cutting it the usual size. I might like just, just kind of do that because I really don't think I need that big of a pocket. The only reason why I might want to is if it's going to lay flatter. So that's why I think I'll just try it out. But I'm gonna use this leftover gray polka dotted fabric that I had from my very first Minerva make um, at a couple months ago. And I think I'm gonna use this to do the same thing, at least for the pocket bag. And I might even do the thing where I cut this off here, have this in the denim, and then have the lower part in the lighter fabric, just so that it doesn't add bulk to what ends up being the stomach, which is the last place that I want bulk. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so I did cut down the pattern piece. I'll show you. I just took off this much off the bottom of both pieces, and then I cut the pocket bag or the you know the part that fit, fit that's only inside the skirt what's it called yeah the pocket bag um in this cute polka dot and then i did the facing part half in the denim and half in this so i'm going to sew these two together and yeah we'll see we'll see what happens all right so things are coming along nicely I have the bulk of the skirt finished. I ended up going with um, using the polka dot just for the bag and using the full denim for the lining. So you can just see that peeking out there, hopefully not when it's done. And I have tried this on, oh, let me turn it around. So I have tried it on and I think it fits. I mean, until you put the waistband on and the buttons, you don't know for sure, but it seems like the number 12 was the right call. It, I, I cut the shorter one and it definitely is on the shorter side, but coming up for summer, um, I think that's good. And maybe if I made it again, I might add an inch or two, but a cute little mini skirt for summer is always nice. Okay, I'm downstairs in my kitchen having a little soup before I go to Spanish class. And then I'm gonna go buy the Merceria and see if they have buttons, because I didn't think to get buttons. Um, yeah, and I don't have a stash here, so I have no buttons in my stash. So I'm gonna go buy the Merceria, see if they have any buttons and that I wanna wear with my jean skirt. And if not, I guess I'll wait till another day. But if so, I'm gonna try to do the buttonholes. So I have been looking on the Closet Case Patterns website and they have a little blog post about doing buttonholes on jeans and denim. And yeah, I'm gonna give that a try. But overall so far, I'm really happy. Like I think it fits well based on just wrapping it around myself. So I've taken the leap and I've finished the edges I hemmed it because I figured that would be easier beforehand. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Okay, so I went to the Merceria after Spanish class and looked at buttons and they just kind of had plain plastic buttons and it's not really what I wanted. And then I looked down and I go, wait a second, look, my, <laughs> this has really pretty buttons, really pretty metal buttons. I've noticed them before. This is a cashmere sweater that I bought at a, secondhand place years ago. We're almost out of sweater weather anyway. And these are really cute. I think that they'd be really nice on the skirt. So I think I'm gonna take them off here and put them on that. And then I can always, and the, the other part that's good is now I'll have a, a size already for the buttonhole, even though this is a knit. So maybe that makes a difference, but so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm doing a bit of buttonhole practice. I'm not sure why. So sometimes it's perfect like this and sometimes it goes up to the top over and then comes down and passes the bottom and then goes over and then I get this weird gappy gappy. Gappy gappy. Gappy gappy. See? So, but my last one, which is my last one? This one. My last one turned out well and my button fits and so I think I'm gonna go with that, but I'm gonna practice a bit more. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so I'm in um, Lily's bathroom and 
I can't get the fan to turn off, so you're just gonna have to mind the, um, the noise. Okay, so I wanted to show you this because, first of all, buttons almost 100% applied. I have one more to do. Waist is good, but hips are not. Hips are too much. You can see here, it's a little tulipy. It's almost literally like a tulip skirt. So I'm gonna put it on inside out and I'm going to take down the side here, which might make the pockets a little bit, um, a little bit less accessible, but that's fine. I mean, for me, pockets are more function than anything else. Um, I do like the smaller pocket bags. I can't put my hand flat in it, but I do feel like it's flatter on, on the body, which I like. And I'm really, really proud of these buttonholes. I was worried that the waist was gonna be too small, but it seems like it's good. So I just need to do this button, and then I'm gonna take down this side. It's done, yay! I am super proud of myself, I have to say, because I have put off learning to do buttonholes and buttons for years now. Not on purpose, but kind of on purpose. Like every time I kind of had the opportunity, I would find a way to not do a buttonhole. And while I wouldn't say it's easy as pie, as everyone kind of said, um, it was definitely worth learning. And I do feel comfortable now that I could do, uh, you know, a big long shirt dress with 15 buttons and feel totally comfortable. So here she is. And there is, that, that button is on there. I just didn't do it up. And you can see the contrast for the pocket bag. Um, I probably will go back to a full length pocket next time because it doesn't really interrupt the, the flow of the skirt. Um, needs another little press. I haven't found it as, uh, as pressable as I would like, probably just because of my ironing board. Um, the waistband is perfect. It is absolutely the right size. I took some video. I'll put the video in now. So the waistband is exactly where I like it. And I did have to take in the sides, the hips. I think basically next time, which I will definitely be next time, I will grade from the 12 down to the 10 at the hips. And I think that'll probably be exactly right. Um, the buttons that I took off of my cardigan are perfect. I really, really like them. And yeah, other than that, I mean, it, it's still maybe a tiny bit big, but I know that denim tends to shrink. And so I'd rather it be just a teeny, teeny bit big, and not even big, just a teeny bit um, roomy, rather than have it be too tight and then later on, you know, have it be tight again. So yeah, so here we are, Aaron's skirt, Highly recommend. I thought the instructions were great. I ended up doing some top stitching, extra top stitching down the sides, on the side seams, and also down either side of the button placket on the inside and the outside. And yeah, so I am, oops, getting extra light here. Yeah, so I am super stoked. I'm now gonna look through all my patterns for things with buttons. <laughs> do the opposite that I normally do. Uh, thanks for following along with me while I was making my first Aaron skirt and my first buttons and buttonholes. And yeah, I can't wait to show you whatever I'm making next. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.